Hey Bullfroggers, welcome back to Bullfrog Pawn Shop. In this video, I'll show you a little add-on trick to a technique originally developed by Jamie from Inspire Woodcraft, link to his video up here. I do recommend you watch that entire video to get some of the finer points of the technique that I'm not going to cover in this video. Anyway, I developed a little add-on trick to that technique to make it quicker, easier, more accurate, and repeatable. Let's get to it. So I'm building this steampunk wardrobe, and I need to square the ends and cut them to length. They're too wide for my chop saw, and my miter gauge isn't long enough to support the pieces all the way through the cut. Then I remembered this technique. To summarize, if you need to make a cut that exceeds the capacity of your rip fence, or in my case, that is too wide for your miter gauge, you can use the left edge of your table as a reference. Just measure the distance from the edge of the table to the blade, and clamp a temporary fence to your work piece that distance from your cut line. Then run that fence along <clears throat> the edge of this table to make the cut. It works like a champ and I will demonstrate the technique here in a few minutes. The add-on that I discovered was to cut two gauge blocks or story sticks to remove the measuring part of that process and make it quicker, easier, more accurate, and repeatable. Here's how I did it. Cut the gauge blocks with your miter gauge and a small block of scrap held up against the edge of your table. This will make the gauge blocks exactly the same length as the distance from the blade to the table edge. By the way, if you plan on using this te technique with other blades, you may need to make separate gauge blocks for those blades. Mark your cut line. In this case, I'm just shaving off a tiny bit. No need to draw the cut line all the way across. Clamp the blocks to the workpiece exactly on your cut line. Clamp your temporary gauge blocks up against the fence. Make sure they're on the side away from your cut. Then remove the blocks. Then make the cut. By the way, it is essential that your temporary fence extends well beyond your workpiece on both sides or you'll get a lot of slop at the beginning and the end of your cut. Don't ask me how I know this. That's all for today, Bullfroggers. Don't forget to like this video and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Bullfrog Pond Workshop.